and welcome to Off the Water, the podcast brought to you from the national governing body, RWA Scotland. We use this podcast to bring together voices from the Scottish boating community to share stories and showcase what Scotland has to offer. I'm Jack Mitchell and I'm hosting alongside Nikki Stewart and our conversation this week is around cruising. As the waters of Scotland have opened up a little bit more and a few more of you explored a little bit further, we thought it was appropriate to draw on some of those, those conversations and stories. But exciting this week, uh, our producer Mark Turner uh, joins us as he tells us he's a cruising instructor and he knows a little bit about boats. Uh, apparently he does know what's the difference between a sheet and a halyard. So we're going to be testing some of his knowledge a little bit later. Yeah, this uh, makes a little bit of a change being on this side of the microphone. and. Yeah, I think the halyards, they're the ones that go up and down and the sheets, they're, they're in and out, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, I'm hopefully going to not stutter through this. And thanks very much for having me along. So our podcast aims to provide an insight into the work across the sector and really give an update to the current issues or changes to our restrictions. Just as a wee disclaimer, these are the thoughts of our own and of our guests. And if you have any comments or complaints, please do drop us an email at podcast at rwascotland.org.uk. We are also really looking forward to the feedback on the podcast and subjects we have covered, but more importantly, some of the ideas and future episodes that you'd look forward to. So please find the link in our bio. We've pushed this episode back a little bit to allow us to give an update on adult outdoor contact sport. This is an area that many within the boating community have been eagerly waiting for. Ultimately, the updates around guns relate mainly around facilities, but including that organised outdoor contact sport. This re- resumes for all ages following the guidance from the relevant governing bodies on the 24th of August. There may also be an opportunity to open up indoor facilities as of the 31st of August, but this this can be quite onerous for the facility managers looking at some of the restrictions and guidance that they, that they will need to put in place. So alongside Sports Scotland, we're hosting an online workshop at 7 p.m. on Monday the 31st of August to really go through the detail and give you as much advice as possible. But please don't forget, uh, we have our regular Connect sessions uh, and follow our social media channels for all the details and information. All the guidance is aimed to reduce the spread of COVID-19, which is still out there. And we felt it was important to share a quote that Vaughn Marsh, the cruising chief instructor, had found and shared with us last week. In the end, it will be impossible to know if we overreacted or did too much, but it will be quite apparent if we underreacted or did too little. This week, we wanted to focus on cruising and have three interviews lined up. I've definitely noticed a lot more boats out on the water uh, with lots of people making the most of being out and having the opportunity to spend some time on their boat. Yeah, I've managed some uh, cruising myself around the cloud this year and had two conversations. Uh, with uh, Katie McCorkendale, who's relatively new to cruising and works for the RNLI, and uh, Mark Malin, who's based in Fife and has managed some epic family cruises. And I caught up with Chris Cardwell from Sailing Cruising Northern Ireland. Chris keeps his boat in the Clyde and is really passionate about sailing around the West Coast. I've seen Chris posting on various Facebook pages over the last couple of years, and so it was really nice to get a chance to meet him and speak to him about cruising, as well as the sense of community that's found in some of these Facebook groups. So this week, we've allowed Mark and uh, Nikki to really get excited about their passions of cruising, and I'm really excited for the next conversation coming up with Mark, who catches up with Katie to hear about all of her adventures. Well, hi, Jack. Yeah, thanks very much. I'm with someone today who is, well, new to this sailing malarkey uh, and has been quite keen through relationships they've developed to take it on a little bit more and been managing to get a good few experiences afloat. And so I'm here with uh, Katie McCorkendale from Danoon. She hasn't really done any sailing previous or otherwise otherwise mucking around in boats but nothing with a mast. Katie's here and I'm sure can tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, hi there. Yes, so um had uh, lots of experience of mucking about in small boats, motor boats, etc. Um, in my earlier life, but not until um, I took up the kind offer of uh, racing round round Mull on a lovely um, 50 foot boat. <laughs> I hadn't um, ever done any sailing whatsoever so I had absolutely no idea what I was committing myself to however uh, it turned out to be a great deal of fun and ended up um, being something that I've continued so that was uh, the summer of 2016 and uh, we had a terrific few days on a lovely 
on a lovely boat. Um, I can't tell you how we did in the race, but anyway, <laughs> it didn't put me <laughs> off. Shall we say that there was possibly the uh, the the test of of our relatively new relationship. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that just before. You have a as you described your skipper uh, in this, who is actually a fiancé and soon to be a husband-to-be, which is all very exciting. But uh, yeah. he basically took you on this trip around Mull with, uh, yeah, that's a big old trip yes. to go on first. How was that? Well, it was really um, into, well, it was quite a funny thing happened when we arrived in, in Oban on the Thursday evening, um, where I bumped into old friends from Loch Spean who were great sailors. And the intro uh, from, from that evening was, gosh, hi, Katie, I haven't seen you for ages. When did you start sailing? And I said, tomorrow. <laughs> so that was our, uh, that was that was really the, I had absolutely no idea what I was letting myself in for. <laughs> but anyway, we were, I uh, was with a very able crew, another four people who were all very able. So I basically was just a passenger. That sounds great. And so this year we've had obviously lots of issues to get afloat. Have you managed to get afloat at all this year? Yes, we, um, so our own boat, which is at Towered Sailing Club, uh, wasn't able to launch. None of the boats from Towered have launched at all this summer, very sadly, but for all the obvious reasons that we all know about. What we did was, um, David did lots of investigating over how we could how we could get afloat and how we could get away and, and have fun in our holidays. So we went, uh, we chartered a boat via Sail Away from Largs, um, and we chartered a lovely boat uh, called Spectre left from Largs and uh, we had a we did a terrific week we didn't have good weather as such but uh, I believe it was good weather for sailing. <laughs> so there was a little bit of wind then but uh, slightly damp. There certainly was yes we did uh, we did experience there was lots of lots of 30 40 um, mile an hour wind we got places quite quickly sometimes. And where did you go on your trip? From... We went uh, we went to Campbelltown, first of all, and then we just did one night in each. Campbelltown, Ballycastle, Isla, Colonsey, Gia, back to Campbelltown, and then back to Largs. Was there anywhere new that you'd visited within that? Yep. Uh, so for me, Ballycastle and Colonsey were both new to me. Yeah, they were. Uh, it's terrific to get to both of them. And, and, you know, did you notice any changes of behaviour of others while you're out in the water or when you were ashore in these locations? It was so quiet out on the water. Honestly, for the whole week, we really didn't see very many other boats. It was unbelievably quiet until we were coming back to the, the Largs area. It was incredibly quiet. Ashore, I would have said Valley Castle, the cases of, of uh, COVID-19 in, in Northern Ireland were very, very low so I think there we were less aware of anything different there but certainly Colin say we only went ashore for a, a, a short time and um, we did go up to the hotel and, and just had a walk putting down our details and uh, hand sanitizing distancing from people out with our, our party but no, nothing else different. Colin says that's always quite a tricky anchorage anyway to get into but the smaller islands have certainly had a uh, concerns about visiting boats so we're always listening out for how people got on when they're touring around but when you've done 270 miles in a week that's a good tour as far as I can see. <laughs> we were the only boat in the anchorage overnight literally the only boat so <laughs> um, it was it was lovely I have to say it was beautiful. And uh, what have you enjoyed about being back on the water? I suppose for me because I have taken this up later in life and uh, there's an awful lot to learn a lot of new terminology things are not called what you might imagine they're called and um, so for me refreshing my memory of what to do what things are called uh, but fortunately it seemed to be that most things uh, were just the same only it was a slightly larger boat so we had some um, we had electric winches and uh, a couple of different things like that uh, but apart from that it was just really nice to refresh my memory and get back out there. What, what else do you take from being back out in the water? Do you, do you have a um, sort of does it give you anything else when you go afloat? Is it a nice holiday, relaxing? I mean uh, I, yeah, or is very it much so I think my the thing I've enjoyed about sailing over being in motorboats as, as I previously had been is just the quiet that you can experience out uh, on the water definitely the 
uh, sometimes when you're when you're sailing close to land, the smell of the land and things that you just don't necessarily appreciate um, in motorboats. And also, I suppose, all the, the wildlife that we saw during the trip. Very few boats, but lots and lots of uh, lots of birds, lots of gannets. Uh, they were our entertainment. We did see a minke whale, some lots of porpoises. And yeah, I, for me, it's the, the quiet that I really, I really enjoy. That that does sound amazing. It really does. Uh, I managed to get out a little bit for a week and did experience that quiet. But the wildlife itself is a particular passion. I really enjoy just going out and hearing the noises and, and seeing the wildlife. Anyway, yeah. um, I note that you work with the RNLI. In that role, have you got had an increased consideration of the risks in going afloat? Yes, I would say I can't really fail to to notice it on a daily basis. Just in my line of work, there's a, I suppose, a, literally a daily reminder of respecting the water. Um, also, several of my relatives have um, made their living at sea, so I've always been really conscious of, you know, respecting that. My children have never been able to go anywhere near the water without a life jacket on or anything like that. So, but I would say working for the RNLI does definitely heighten my my awareness of of all the the various dangers and and always to respect what we're what we're up to in the power of the sea never underestimate it knowing some of the team locally here that work for the rnli i know that if i had a shout for me that it would be the people i know coming to rescue me which has a good and a bad side to it i suppose <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah, david will kill me for mentioning this but we did um the first season that we had our own boat, we um, lost our mast during a race round Butte. So even before I worked for the RNLI, I had been um, rescued by them, which <laughs> turned out to be a really good story for an interview. But that wasn't the thought running through my head on the day. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, it, I bet it wasn't. Another little question was um, in terms of the organisations we have there in LI who set out to save lives at sea. But have you received any formal RYA training? No, I haven't. And I did intend to this year. Day Skipper is the is the one I've been advised to to go for. I'm, I'm reliably informed that I am almost ticking the competent crew <laughs> box. I don't know that I would say that myself, but nice if other people do. So uh, I think that would definitely be my, my next move would be to try and get some of that. It would be really nice to do the theory as well as the, the, the stuff I've done, which is just learning learning on the spot. Have you got any plans then for next year? If your boat is going to make it in the water, where, where might your adventures take you? <laughs> yes. So I said to David the other day, oh, it's less than 10 months till we get married and he said and seven till the boat launches <laughs> so I thought well there we are there's our priorities I would say some of the places that we didn't get this year that had been planned uh, would be nice to get to for next year so far as somewhere that I know we would love to get to um, and uh, just explore a bit more we're lucky where we are at Towards that we can be up the Kyles of Butte and, and round to Kames and Tinnebrook in a relatively short space of time and it would just be lovely next year to get back to doing all of that. Well that's wonderful thanks very much for uh, sharing some of your experiences Katie and it does sound like you made the most of getting afloat in the summer that we had there. Thank you very much for coming to speak to us today. An absolute pleasure thanks very much Mark. Yeah, I'm with uh, Mark Malin, who his partner Heloise and his two children have been regularly sailing their Sadler Hilarity from Aberdour Boat Club with their two boys, including heading over to Norway in 2018. Hello, Mark. How are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. <laughs> Good to talk to you. No, great to have you on the podcast. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourselves and your boat? Yes. Uh, well, we are... Uh... We've lived in Aberdown now for 13 years and have been members of the boat club for uh, for that time. Uh, and I'm currently the secretary at the boat club. Um, I'm a retired police officer, so I've got a lot of time on my hands. Um, my wife is an art teacher and we have twin 11-year-old boys, um, Oliver and Adam, that uh, make up our crew. Our boat is a 1987 Saddler 29 uh, named Hilarity. It's been actually in the family for 15 years. Uh, my father had it for 10 and we've had uh, the boat for the last five and have just gradually been upgrading her for uh, slightly more extended cruising. Wow, that sounds absolutely great. And so all four of you quite comfortable. I, I've got a small boat myself, so 
I'm quite know it's can be quite cosy in 29 foot. Um, it, it it can be, yes, but uh, for the for the most part, um, pretty comfortable. Although the, the boys now are sufficiently large that uh, they've vacated the four peak. Um, but fortunately, Heloise likes that. That's her domain up there. So. Uh, yeah, we're, we're we're still okay with the four of us on board. And uh, did you manage to get any sailing trips over the summer since lockdown was eased in about the 10th of July? Well, we have. We've been out about um, a dozen or so times, mainly for day trips. However, we did manage uh, a week away, and we went uh, via a stop at Dunbar to uh, Holy Island, where we spent three or four days at anchor before retracing our steps and coming back up again so yeah we, we we've had um a short cruise of over a week which was unplanned before all this but uh, we didn't need an awful lot of planning uh, other than tides and weather for that one so yeah, that's super um getting down the coast like that it can be quite exposed i imagine in the north sea there's some great wildlife then over your trips um you sent through some great images of yourself with a wee dolphin going by what have been your highlights for the family this year well this year actually we've not seen quite so much in the way of um wildlife but i, I think because most of our sailing has been fairly inshore and there are plenty of seals about, probably rather too many, because there's very little in the way of fish. <laughs> or if they are, we've not been able to catch them. Yeah, but uh, we've, we've not seen any a whales or very many dolphins because we haven't been that little bit further offshore, as we often do when we go further up the East Coast or, or further into the North Sea. But it's always a pleasure to see all the gannets diving on a sunny day near the Bass Rock. And we pass close by that um, in both directions down to Holy Island. So that's wonderful to see. So, yeah, and um, early in the season, although we weren't sailing uh, at the time, we were noticing quite a lot of puffins this year, which can only be good. Yes, you must excuse. I am a West Coast cruiser, so I'm not too familiar with the East Coast, although I have had a boat trip from North Berwick out round Bass Rock, and indeed the gannets were quite spectacular. You mentioned you were down on anchor in Holy Isle. Have you noticed or met any other people and noticed change in behaviours of others while you've been out in the water? Uh, not so much on the water. There does seem to be fewer boats, obviously. And a look around any harbour or marina uh, will obviously confirm that's the case. Uh, obviously, many and varied reasons for people not uh, getting out this season. But uh, on the water, there's the usual courtesy and pe people are, are generally very friendly. On shore, the same, we've not encountered any problems, but there obviously is a bit of a lack of facilities in some places with um, various councils doing different things at different stages with regards to opening public toilets and things like that. And do you have uh, full facilities on board the fine yacht Hilarity? Uh, well, we don't have a shower, but uh, we do have, uh, uh, we obviously have a, a toilet with a small holding tank and um, a couple of uh, sinks. So, yeah, we can... Uh, do what we need to on board. No, quite ad quite understand the adventure. Um, and, you know, in terms of that adventure, what has your family enjoyed about being back on the water? I think it's, the uh, well, we always enjoy sailing, especially when the weather's nice. It's a sense of, uh, of freedom. It's also a great way to, to de-stress and to simply forget everything else that's going on around you. And you keep away from listening to the news, so you're not keeping up with politics and, and all the arguments back and forth there. The other good thing is on a, on a small yacht, you're contained in your own environment, so you don't have to consider who may have been there before or after you. Um, you know, it's your own little domain, your own little self-enclosed world, and it's just a, 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 a treat, a wonderful treat, and a great pleasure to be able to, to be out. No, wonderful. Have you or any of your family or the uh, boys received any formal kind of ROA training? Yes. Well, when I was uh, when I was younger, <laughs> I um, was a, a dinghy instructor, a dinghy sailing instructor, and a, an ROA powerboating instructor. Uh, I know that that's now lapsed, but uh, however, I did several years uh, of that. Um, more recently, uh, perhaps three years ago, my wife and I both did the RYA um, Day Skipper course over at Largs. So yeah, we've received that training, plus we've done um, Sea Survival and uh, VHFDSC. A little bit of a means towards an end for us, um, because we had sailed for many, many years. But like a lot of these things, when you uh, sail either with other people or by yourself, you learn how to do things, but you don't necessarily stop to consider why you're doing it. And if you do the, the course, it puts things into perspective and explains the reasons for things. And I find that very helpful. So even though I had a lot of the skills, I maybe didn't have a lot of the understanding that went with it. So, yeah, that, that's um, 
always very helpful. And as I say, it was a means towards an end because that then enabled us to apply for the International Certificate of Competence and go away and charter a boat overseas, which was uh, one of our objectives for doing that. Excellent. And where have you been for that? Uh, we went to Greece. Uh, we, we chartered a yacht uh, out of Athens for a couple of weeks, 2017. And that was a, a wonderful treat as well. I also that you'd uh, been up to Norway in 2018 in the boat. Can you tell us anything about that trip? My wife and I and my father and a friend of his went in a 24-foot boat from uh, Nairn on the, the, the Murray Firth in 1997. Um, but we all had a relatively short time with about eight days there and we had to come back again. So it was something we'd always wanted to do. And uh, by chance, the summer of 18, with that big high pressure that parked itself over the um, the North Sea in Britain, frankly, um, gave us a, a, a tremendous um, opportunity to do that. And it was by chance because we didn't uh, obviously know that was going to happen. But we went over and spent a month and we made landfall at Stavanger and then made our way up the coast and the fjords between Stavanger and, and Norway over the course of a month. Um, and then uh, sailed back again and made landfall at Peterhead on the way back. From Peterhead, we just overnighted for 24 hours back down to Abra. Um It's a, one, a wonderful trip. That does sound incredible. Um, I would imagine the boat feels a lot smaller in some of those fjords. I've never been to Norway, but it looks an extremely impressive coastline. It is. It's a bit like the west coast of Scotland on, on steroids, I think, but without the without the tides to consider. Um, the tidal range being barely a metre up in um, Bergen and even less than that down in Stavanger. And, and its facilities for, for boats are fantastic, fairly um, comparable, if, if not slightly cheaper, um, for boating activities in Norway than, than in the UK. Moving around the country, transport and eating out are extremely expensive, but... Um, most other things are reasonably comparable and if you can shop around then uh, it's quite a, a, a doable thing the norwegians of course are wonderfully welcoming and they all speak english uh, very well at one point um, encountered a norwegian gentleman who'd just come back from around the world trip on his boat and talked to him extensively and i offered him a bottle of whiskey and he was the only norwegian i've ever met that's teetotal <laughs> So we didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, that is quite an exciting one. And clearly you've definitely got a, a good sense of adventure as a family. What have you got planned for 2021? Well, we thought next uh, season, um, obviously all being well, if, uh, if the course of the coronavirus goes the way we all hope it will, um, next year our plans are to spend the summer on the, on the West Coast, probably via the, the Caledonian Canal, Possibly the Fourth Clyde, probably the Caledonian, because that is a whole big holiday in itself going through that canal. It's so relaxing and spectacular, and the, the boys love that one. So that's more likely the more likely route. Okay, have you have you done that one with the boys before? Yes. Well, when we took over the boat, um, it was in Nairn, so we did this sort of three canals in 2015. We went through the Caledonian Canal, down the west through the Crinan, and then back through the Fourth and Clyde. So we, we have done these routes before, and also we've, we've been through a couple of times um, when my father had the boat and we sailed on, on the west up to Skye and uh, the small isles and then Mull and, and so on. At this point, I mean, I'd just like to say thank you very much for coming on the podcast and sharing some of your experiences of getting afloat. If you were to inspire anyone else to get afloat, what would you say? Uh, no, that's that's interesting. Um, I would say give it a go. It, and the one thing I would say is it doesn't have to be uh, as expensive as you might think. You know, there are lots of people willing to um, take you out as a crew member. Um, alternatively, you know, you can pick up a, a small dinghy for virtually for next to nothing these days and, and see if you enjoy it and then uh, take it from there. No, wonderful. That sounds super. Well, listen, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, I hope you guys get in a few few more sales before the end of the season and make good use of the boat. And uh, thanks very much for coming along today. Oh, you're very welcome. Hi, Chris. Welcome to our podcast. And thank you very much for being part of our cruising episode. My pleasure. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and a bit about your boat as well? Right, well... My name's Chris. Um, I'm from Belfast originally, as you can probably tell, but I've been living over here in Scotland since 2012. My boat at the minute, 
current boat, which I plan on keeping for a long, long time, is a Feeling 326. It's a French boat. I've owned it for just over two years. Bought it up in Inverness. Um, and the first trip was obviously to bring it out to the Caledonian Canal, which was a fantastic trip. Had the wind on our nose the whole way from the, Cal- from the Caledonian Canal all the way down through to Troon um, before we got a decent sail. Um, before that, my previous boat was a, also another French boat, a, a Mirage 26. Um, which I bought here in Troon. We actually bought the boat before we bought our house, so we had our priorities completely right. But before that, I've been, same as yourself, I've been brought up with boats since day one. My dad was a sailor before me, and he still has his boat in Bangor. Um, so really, since before I could walk, I was out in the boats, out in the water, so it's been a part of my life the whole time. And Have you done any RYA training or any qualifications? Yes, um, well, I've done quite. I've done a few. Um, my wife and I, we did our. She did her competent crew when I did my day skipper, and we actually travelled down to the Isle of Wight to do that a few years ago. It's one of those ones. I think there's a lot of people out there could be in the same boat. Excuse the pun. That if you have a boat, you've got access to the water. Why do I need to do qualifications? Why do I need to have this? But and, and I'll admit, I'll freely admit, I was for a long time in that position as well because I had a boat myself, I had access to my father's boat when I was younger, why do I need to do a qualification? Um, but later on in life, I realized it's actually, you can learn a lot of things from it. You may think you know how to do things in a certain way. Other people have different methods, different techniques, and you have a lot still to learn. And you're learning till the day you die, especially when it comes to being on the water. So at the minute, I've got the skipper qualification, she's comp crew. Um, I've got my coastal theory and I'm working towards doing the coastal practical as well, which will be in October, um, with a few to go as far as I can, yacht master after that eventually. Yeah, I think you can learn so much from other people and just taking that time to look yeah. at these skills and focus on it. It can be so useful. As you say, there isn't one way to do everything. Sailing, there's no. so much more variation and actually having no, no. other ideas in your toolbox to pull out in different situations or circumstances can be really useful. I mean, even just from doing your online theory courses and doing your chart work online, you will develop your own technique perhaps, how to do things, but when you sit in a classroom or you have a friend show you how to do it on the boat, they might show you something else that you were maybe struggling with and it will just click because they show you in a completely different way. Likewise, when you go out in the boat, you may never have used a midship line or a spring before and somebody will say let me show you how this works and you will think that's absolute magic how, how did you do that and um, so there's always so much you're, you're learning till the day you die really when it comes to boats what did you have planned sailing wise this summer uh, well this year um i think like a lot of people um i had a lot of plans and it's almost like a paraphrase of an old saying if you want to make the weller man laugh tell him your your best plans and really, yeah, we, we had a lot of things planned this year. Originally, it was to sail around Ireland. Um, I was going to take about a month off work and do a trip around Ireland, take our time and take in as much of the scenery and local history as we could, rather than just doing a quick whistle-stop tour. Obviously, COVID has changed things ever so slightly. Um, so then we changed our plans, thinking, right, well, instead of doing Ireland, because we obviously weren't able to get access to the boat with the lockdown restrictions as pushed the season on back doors like everyone else. So the next plan was to go to the Isle of Man, which is still closed down, so that's not going to happen either. So we're on the plan C now, which is to just stay in Scotland and Northern Ireland and just go up around the open Tobermory, um, sail around the islands, and then nip across to Northern Ireland for coming back home. And have you found that you've been able to get up around the mull already this year? That, that, I haven't left the mull yet or up, gone up to the mull yet so I should say. Um, it's just been at the minute within the Clyde. Um, I've only really been able to get access to the boat in the last few weeks because I was actually stuck in Bowling Basin which was um, there, there was damage caused to the, one, the, the sea locks there and I was prevented from getting out until that was repaired. And they couldn't repair that until the lockdown restrictions were lifted. So that had a knock-on effect for me. Um, So it's only really in this last month that I've been able to get back on the water on my own boat. Um, But I've barely touched dry land ever since, to be honest with you. I've been at the boat 
certainly for the last week, I think I've spent six days off it up on the boat. And I'm going back up again tomorrow to spend a few days before I'm back to work. So it's, it's just a matter of, of making the most of it when you can and making the most of the weather as well. I'm in a very similar situation. It's probably the last month that we've managed to get down to our boat and be uh-huh. able to get out the best use of what we what time we do have and going around yeah. the Clyde and seeing different places. It's been really nice. Definitely. definitely. Um, I mean, one thing I thought was so nice to see was some of our old neighbours up in Portavati. One of them has just started to come back to his boat after some medical uh, treatment. Um, so it's lovely to see them back again. But I was saying to them that we're so fortunate that we have our boats. With the way things are at the minute, I was, I was stuck in Spain when Spain went into lockdown and it was not a nice feeling checking your mobile phone every five minutes, expecting to see a cancelled flight. A lot of people won't be wanting to go abroad this year because they'll be too afraid to go in case they get stuck out or they have to quarantine and come back home. So to be in the position where you've got your own boat, which to a large degree is self-sufficient, never mind all the facilities you have in most marinas. We're so lucky to be able to have this available for us to use. And your staycation is staying on the boat. And when it comes to being on the water, west coast of Scotland, to me, is the place to be because you just have so much on your doorstep. There's a huge amount of variety and there's so many different kind of areas for it to, be, to shelter in as well. So even when it's blowing, when it's really windy, you can usually tuck in somewhere and there's there's just right. so many opportunities. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you stay in the Clyde, you're no more ever more than a couple of hours away from a safe haven, from a marina. But if you go further abroad, like you say, you've got so many little languages that you can just pop into and drop the anchor right out of storm for a day or a couple of hours before moving on. Other parts of the country, you're completely exposed to the, all the elements. You'll have a long fetch of a sea coming in. If you're even going across Northern Ireland, you know, there's only a few islands around it, Rathlin, Copeland Islands. Other than that, you're quite exposed. But when you're up here on the west coast of Scotland, you have literally hundreds of islands you can hide behind. And I guess there's so much variety. Have you been anywhere a bit different or visited it anywhere new this year? This this year, unfortunately, not really. Um, I haven't really been able to get anywhere that I wouldn't normally have been to. But as I say, the plan was to do Ireland, but that's not going to happen. It's getting a little bit year and a little bit late in the year for that. So the plan was still to do um, the Isle of Man. That's not going to happen. So we'll we'll definitely do Northern Ireland, visit Rathlin Island, um, back up around to Isla, um, Port Ellen, places like that again. We've we've done them before previously on the boat, and we didn't have an awful lot of time. We would like to go back and just have a bit more time and stay somewhere for a couple of days and explore the islands and before moving on somewhere else. So. Hopefully next month, um, September, we'll be able to really get out and spend most of that month sailing around and some of our original plans were, hopefully. Yeah, it's nice to get that balance between have, going for a sail and enjoying just being out in the water, but also spending some time ashore, visiting new places, and yeah. doing some of the touristy stuff's good fun, but just learning about other, it could be the history in the, the area, it could be about what's yeah. going on. I had family over from, from Northern Ireland just this week and it's literally a couple of miles across the loch is Tarbot and it's one of my favourite little places to go to and that's why I like being in Loch Fine so much um, that you've got the juxtaposition of a modern marina which literally the building has mood lighting it changes colour throughout the night. Just over two miles across the loch you have a traditional fishing village and everything that comes with it and it's just so lovely to have that. And we love the history of the place, the, the fishing fleets, the castles. There's just so much history to see there. And not just there as well, but you can go further on up the loch. You have Inverary, you've got the old jail. Or you can go the other direction, go down to Campbelltown. Again, a lot of history down there as well. So there's a lot to see and do. And you don't want to... It's lovely being out in the water and sailing. It's what we all do it for, of course. But it's nice to go somewhere and visit that place and spend a bit of time ashore and take it in. And plus as well with the... With the way things are today, you've got the online community. Um, you'll have people all over the country on the group that you may have already been chatting to before. And you'll go into somewhere, you'll call into Oban or you'll call into Port Bannantyne. It doesn't matter where you're going. But when you go in, 
there's a good chance there's going to be somebody there that already knows you and you you've got that connection right away before you even arrived. Yeah, I think the online community for sailing and for cruising is a brilliant place for um, sharing information, for asking questions, making connections. And yeah, you can go rock up in most marinas and you'll see someone could be flying one of the burgees that the clubs have have got or you'll see it or you recognize the name of the boat or you'll see they'll post on on Facebook. I think I've been in a couple of places I was in um, Gia and someone had posted a picture of our boat on uh, on Facebook. Mother half had seen it and he's texting yeah. back going, oh, that's us. <laughs> it's really nice. It, it brings everyone everyone it together. Really does. It really, really does, yeah. It, it's, it's such a nice thing as well just to see one of the burgies from the, the group when you're out in the boat and you're not expecting it. I always remember the, um, the first one that I saw and I wasn't expecting it was again back in Port of Valley that I had just called to the boat um, and I was doing a few jobs on board and this boat came in and they went past me to come down to the end to turn and as they were going past it, it just clocked the, the Bergie and that's the SCNI Bergie so I chatted over to them like are you an SCNI? Said, yeah I made that I designed that that's my Bergie <laughs> it really is so we got chatting away and uh, I thought that was fantastic and it's just nice whenever you go somewhere and you see it you got someone you can talk to right away. And even if they don't have it, people will be on the group anyway and they'll still follow the progress of boats. Um, when we bought our boat, as I say, two years ago, and we were coming down, we came through the canal and we went and we stayed in Oban. And we got in the Oban, got tied up, and I had to go up to the bar because the, the, um, the office was closed. So I'm walking up to the bar and as I'm walking past it, uh, there's this man was sitting at the table by himself. And he said to me, is your name Chris? Uh, yeah. And he goes, oh, I've been following your progress on the book, on the group. Uh, <laughs> hope you like gin and tonic, because there's one for you. Uh, yeah, okay, great. And I wasn't Aww. expecting that. And this guy had seen me coming in, me posting updates, you know, uh, we're an hour away from Oban, and there was a picture of us coming in the Oban, and he obviously saw us coming in. And it was just such a nice thing to have somebody waiting for you when you came in with a drink saying, nice to meet you at long last, you know, I've been following your progress. And that's part of the parcel of the group, that's, that's what it's about. You can get the technical side of it where I just bought a boat and I need advice for this, or there's water coming in through the engine somewhere, does anyone have any idea? You'll always get answers, usually within minutes for that sort of thing. But at the same time, the social side of it is fantastic as well. I've definitely noticed that there is a lot of new people coming into sailing and posting on these pages yeah, out on yeah. the water. I've not seen the Clyde quite so busy with cruising boats mm -hmm. like ever. I think I've yeah. seen about that number of boats when there's a regatta on or something like that. But actually going yeah. cruising, yeah, it's yeah. so big. And having that place to ask those questions or mm -hmm. um, find out a little bit more yeah. Is, yeah. is fantastic. Um, oh, definitely. We definitely have, we've got that culture of let's have a look at something up on Facebook, maybe before I Google something. And it's great to have have that resource there. Uh, that's the thing. You've got literally thousands of members on the, on these groups. So you don't have to wait long to get an answer. It may not always be the answer you want sometimes, um, but such is the joy of uh, social media. But usually in amongst there, you'll find something that will be of help and will maybe make you think, ah, didn't think about that. I'll go and try that. So they, yeah, they, they definitely do serve a purpose. Um, they're well worth being members of for somebody who's new to boating or sailing or racing or anything at all, or someone who's been at it for decades. There, you know, there's something in it for everyone to get out of. It's going back to the point you made before about the variety. So even you'll get response. Generally, there'll be a couple of different ways of do it, going about something. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, that's always really helpful. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're very, very fortunate. Um, the groups are called Sailing and Cruising. Scotland or Northern Ireland, it doesn't matter. They're, they're sailing and cruising. So they're for everyone. They're for sailors, for people with boats that have big sticks with cloth on them, or people with big power boats, ribs. We also like having, well, we do have a lot of people here inland or on the inland waters as well. Um, Loch Erne, um, certainly just recently there, I've seen quite a few pictures coming in from there, Loch Erne in Northern Ireland. Um, 
sent a birdie off to a, an old friend of mine. He has a boat there just last week. Um, so we have people from all walks of life in all parts of the country. We've got fishermen on board um, in the groups, and they uh, one of them private messaged me. I remember last year saying I didn't know about joining this group because I thought you're all snobs. Basically, it was what he was getting at. You know, he said I didn't know what, what I thought sailors hate fishermen. I said, well, I'm glad you joined it. And to be fair, he said it's not really what I thought it was going to be like. Uh, and that's what I want. You know, I want to have that sort of broad spectrum of people in the groups, um, and we're lucky that we do have that. We've got people who are, we've got 15 year old kids on the group, you know, who just bought their first boat and some of them have had a couple of boats but before they're even 20. Um, we've got people here in the RNLI, their lifeboat crew. We've got people in the MCA, ops rooms operators. Um, we're very, very lucky to have a real broad spectrum as well as RAA members as well. A real broad spectrum of knowledge that we can fall back on. And one of the things that we used to do and we still do run is um, various theme days on the groups throughout the week. And one of them was always Safety Sunday, which proved very, very popular, where we'd pick a topic, or if someone has a topic they would like to raise, they do it on the group. And just to get people talking about it, you know, flares, when was the last time you checked the expiry date on yours? Do you know how to work them? Um, what if you hear a, a Mayday Relay? Do you know what to do? Um, just to, And it's interesting because you'll have various comments from various people saying various things. Some maybe correctly or incorrectly, which you need to be careful with. It's like anything, um, if you read it on the internet, just take it with a pinch of salt. But we're lucky that we do have a lot of people, like I said, RYA, RNLI, MCA, who will chip in and say, actually, this is what we would like you to do. Um, so we're very, very fortunate that way to have that. So I guess on, on that safety theme for this year, being out on the water, have you changed anything and um, that you're doing, or are you a little bit more safety conscious that you've maybe been before, just given the circumstances um, yeah. that we find ourselves in? I think it's just in general, we all have to be like that on the water as much as we are on land. If you go into, I mean, I've been into most marinas this year on the Clyde, and they all do things slightly differently. They all follow the same broad guideline, but each one will do it slightly differently. Some of them will have markings on the pontoon for two meter spaces. Some of them on the stanchions will have hand sanitizer. Some people are happy just to walk past you on the main pontoon. Others will step aside and keep their distance. So I think it's just about a case of being respectful towards one another. But it's no different to what we do when we go into the supermarkets and do our shopping. It's, it's just the world that we live in. We need to think of others as much as ourselves. It's the same theme everywhere you go. And definitely there's some marinas that are a lot stricter with it than others. And there's a bit, that's the same with the supermarkets or the yeah. same with shops or people. Lots of people are kind of taking it different ways. But definitely, you're right, yeah. just being respectful is so important. We're, we're, we're quite lucky in, in some forms as well that being on the water on our own boats, we're actually geared up for isolation and separation as it is. Because once you're on your boat and you've you're, you're come pulled away from the pontoon, you're in your own little world, your own little bubble, and we're very, very lucky for that. So really, contact-wise, we don't have an awful lot with each other. It's just if you then decide, right, we're going to go into one marina at the same time, or if there's a lot of people there already, you need to start thinking, right, distancing, maybe keep an extra couple of masks on board the boat, face masks, hand sanitizer as well. It's just like anything really just but I think as I say it's 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 been geared up like that for a long time naturally on boats to be self-sufficient to be hygienic as well a lot of us we do keep our boats we are very proud of our boats we do keep them clean we keep them tidy and it's just a matter of continuing that on until things hopefully get back to some form of normality yeah fingers crossed that's um sometime yeah. soon but we're just taking it easy I guess yeah yeah so i guess just to to wrap up hoping that things continue to improve the way that they have been um what have you got planned for 2021 well, 2021 is going to be or 2022 is going to be um 2020s plans hopefully definitely around ireland i want to get that done um in the next year or so i always enjoy going across to northern ireland obviously and spend time with my family but for the groups i would like to see a lot more events taking place on both sides of the irish sea 
Um, we had plans to go back to Campbelltown for the music, Mulkintyre Music Festival this year. Obviously, that has been cancelled. So I think next year we'll be we'll be inundated with requests and ideas and suggestions for different events. So I always like to try and attend as many of the events as possible. But like anyone, I still like to try and get my own thing done as well on the boat with my family. Um, so we'll be quite busy next year. So definitely, again, around the Western Isles, Northern Ireland, Isle of Man, and around Ireland as well, ideally. Well, fingers crossed for you for next year. It'd be amazing to sail around Ireland. I've done a wee bit of sailing on the south coast. Yeah, I loved it. I'd love to go back down to around Baltimore and Skull, and there's some really, really pretty places down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I must ask you for some advice and guys then. I have some guys <laughs> to go. <laughs> It was a while ago, I'm not sure. <laughs> but great. Well, thank you very much for joining us and hope you enjoy the rest of your season on the water. And you too. Thank you very much and fair winds. Thank you. Home time. The cruising community is certainly diverse around Scotland, making up one of the biggest areas for participation. And it's been great to catch up with some of the people who've enjoyed Scotland's wonderful coasts and lochs safely this year. As a governing body, we wanted to highlight the importance of training to help build the confidence of those heading afloat and we're continuing our support with our affiliate clubs and recognised training centres. We also want to highlight the importance of taking care to prepare yourself and your boat before going afloat. The RYA's Back to Boating series of online tutorials can provide some top tips and of course you need to check your destinations are open and can accommodate you. It was great to see the pair of you appearing in the recent RNLI video. Love that. It's not true, Mark. You do have a face for video. Uh, but we welcome uh, your feedback and ideas for the future off the water episodes. Just another note to say we have created a survey and we really want to make sure that the topics we cover are relevant. So please do get in touch and send us your thoughts. Please hit the subscribe button, give us a like or leave a review. Remember to keep note of our website and check our social media channels for all of the latest news and updates. Thank you very much for listening to our podcast, Off the Water.